Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all the organizers, especially Jens, for bringing me here. Um, and in particular, by putting uh, Douglas just in front of me, because that saved me 30 minutes, basically. <laughs> so it will be about a problem he posed, but maybe slightly different perspective on it. And as I title said, we will do index theorems. So this will be, I mean, numbers I'm going to show you will be sort of necessary condition for such a state either exist or not exist. So it's different from actual construction. But since problem is such a difficult problem as you have seen in the previous talk, uh, this does have a value in my mind. So, and in particular, I was asked to uh, tell you about things that happened during the last five years, actually. New development after long 15 years of nothing happening uh, on this index side of the story. However, of course, I need to motivate the problem. And this is my motivation. So back in 1997, uh, exactly actually, I was sitting on a computation that required me to do something like this. High mathematics, right? So of course, the, the aim was to compute index of this SU2 maximally supersymmetric yang mill quantum mechanics that was painstakingly <coughs> described for larger n. And the object, the conjecture, actually by Witten, in fact, in 95, for the M-theory conjecture, if there is such a thing as M-theory in 11 dimension that contains all the super, super string three we know of, which was Witten's conjecture, the very first check you have to do is make sure that this index, which count number of ground state uh, with fermion and bosonic state with relative minus sign, come out to be one. There is supposed to be exactly one state, so this is a necessary condition. Uh, of course, the dynamics itself that was laid down is, it, although some, some people call it BFSS model, that's a little bit unfair because, of course, the model itself was uh, pioneered by Jens and developed throughout eight, 80s like this. So there are a lot of study. I, have to, I apologize for not showing every all the references, there are so many references. But again, for any SUN version of the same quantum mechanics, you have to have exactly one state, a one normalizable ground state. So index has to be something like this, and that's of course the aim I was <coughs> looking Now, this computation, which really count the ground state degeneracy, uh, usually it's not that easy to do. I mean, more or less it's impossible to do in non-trivial dynamics. So instead of that, <coughs> because if the spectrum is really discrete and nicely behaving, there is a pairwise cancellation. So having this chirality operator in there will give you complete control over beta. In fact, you can argue that it's independent of beta. And so people actually do the other side of computation. This is effectively what Atiyah and Singer did long, long time ago. However, as was described in the morning, it's not the case here. It's, there's a, lots of continuum state. And once you have a continuum state, this independence of beta just breaks <coughs> down completely. So you, have, you compute this because you can, but that's not exactly the index. So in pure mathematics, of course, close thing there is to this is Atiyah Pato de Singer index theorem. Left hand side would be analog of integral of your characteristic class. And this correction piece that you need to complete the index computation is the say eta invariant for APS index theorem. So bear that in mind that we will see typically this correction pieces. Okay. So there is no trace class operator inside here. There is a no trace class operator inside. So how are these objects defined? Uh, when you have oh, there is a supercharge. What we call supercharge it plays the role of the Dirac but operator. If you have continuous spectrum. Mm. Then there is no. The tra it's not trace class. So. Uh, but we we can still 
oppose quantum mechanics question, we can suppose we can solve the entire the thing. Of how the things are defined. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's being asked here. Sorry. Base minus one. To right. The this end, is. To the minus beta h. So op right. In the That's right because it's a continuum. But uh, even even with a continuum, in fact, you can define it as an integral over something where the counting is replaced by density of state, bosonic density of state minus fermionic density of state. But there you do not have cancellation that you want. And that's precisely why you have this correction piece. Okay. So there is a little bit more subtlety going in there. But I, of course, do this formulate everything. I mean, this computation I did with heat corner computation. Uh, but later computation, I will do it as path integral computation because that happened to be a little bit more convenient. Wait, wait, trivial question. When yeah. you say one, you really mean one or you mean 256? I mean it, it means 256 times one because I separated out yes, U1 so part. Yes, yes. The so entire super multiplet. Yeah. Very good. <coughs> Thank you. Now, of course, I do not have analog of APS index theorem, so I do not know in general how to compute this correction piece, which is difference between the two. And still it's, it's the same in the general problem of this kind that has a boundary or, or asymptotic infinity, there is no well-known systematic way of computing this. However, for gauged quantum mechanics of kind of classes I'm looking at, and it's a very large class, it turns out there is a very simple way of doing this. It comes from the observation that this correction piece, which arises from continuum contribution, and which is why it is fractional, uh, you can argue it always comes from the asymptotic integral of something else. So just like left-hand side is given by integral of some characteristic class in APS case, Right-hand side, eta invariant, analog of eta invariant was computed by integral over a boundary. So this, you can convert it to boundary integral in some physics problem. And all the complicated stuff in, in this SUN theory does not really matter as long as you understand the uh, asymptotic dynamics. And asymptotic dynamics, because it's a commutator potential, just a minute, co commutator potential, all reduced to cartan, the mutually commuting part of the matrix dynamics. So it's essentially free dynamics divided by Weyl groups. So that way you can relate this to another bulk index problem of this kind, right? And that way you can compute this indirectly. And by doing this, one find one quarter, and therefore you have one. Please. There is a mass deformation of this problem. Too. There was mass deformation of this problem. That's right. So there, Which would suggest that it's a good way of defining uh, Right. That's one way of defining it, except that you don't know how to control zero mass limit, which is the original problem. So in this n equals 16 problem, there is a lot of control you have, like adding mass deformation of PP wave kind or some <coughs> other kind, for example. Katz and Smith got tried. So there is a lot of ways of getting this to one. But I do not want to deform original dynamics that much. I want to keep this asymptotic dynamics and do things as honestly as I, as I can. OK? So let's see how far we can go. Anyway, so this uh, trick that I invented I, I sit, sat on this for about a month, wondering what to do. And one day in March, this trick came to my mind. So I did this. It was like one day computation. And that was taken up by uh, Nekras of Moore Shatashibili. Later, the left-hand side, analog of the so-called bulk term, was computed this way, where for SUN, uh, you have this 1 over p square, where p is a divisor of n. It's very interesting. Uh, number theoretical thing on the left hand side. Right hand side, Green and Gottpol and later Katz and Smilga took up my idea, generalized to other gauge group, SUN in particular, and combined the two and argued that this must be the case. You can sort of, this complicated sum is there because 
if you have n such particle, you can divide n into p over n bunches. Okay? And these, these bunches will form suburban state, fly apart from each other, and it, every such sector contributes some fractional number. <coughs> so that way you can understand this number again, you get the right number you want to. So at least necessary condition we, we find. Uh, as uh, Douglas said, a uh, smaller supersymmetry version can be also, I mean, conjecture about it shows up in some other context, and not the membrane context, but the brain uh, type 2 theory compactified on Calabria 2 fold and Calabria 3 fold. In this case, consistency between supersymmetric field theory and type 2 string theory demand that these numbers would be 1, uh, 0, sorry. There's no state whatsoever, no normalizable ground state. Left-hand side, of course, is easier problem. So same people, Monekras of Shatashibili computed left-hand side. And instead of this sum, you have only the case p equal to n, so 1 over n squared. Right-hand side, again, I use exactly the same trick and you get 1 over n squared, again done by uh, Green and Goppa. So n squared minus n squared, uh, 1 over n squared minus 1 over n squared is 0. Okay. What's so, SN? Hmm? What is SN? Oh, this is uh, the vial group of this SUN. So there is this part of, part of computation. I'm not really tell, describing how I get this to stage. But sorry about this. This will take a little bit more time, but I have other things to do. So I am happy to tell you about this later. Now, since SUN do not have any bound state, it's only natural to expect other gauge group do not have bound state either. In fact, for ON and SPN, there is a similar conjecture or similar demand coming from type 2 string and field theory, consistency between the two that says this. And again, this was computable, the same method. Right-hand side is computable in the same method. And you compare the two. And this happened around year 2000. And here we are. So left-hand side was done by Katz and Smilga, which gave 1 over n squared. And you get this series of fractional numbers. Right hand side, uh, starting from what Moore and Akras of Shatavish really gave, uh, Stardako in 2000, in particular Vasily Pesto in 2002, I was told that this was when he was undergraduate student, remarkably. This really nice computation of this number, the right hand side, this one. So, oh, by the way, I, I should have said earlier, the, this Z, is really nothing but the matrix integral of the kind. The model is essentially uh, what we now call IKKT. It's a matrix, not quantum mechanics, matrix integral. And that's because I take small beta limit. This is, it, it is like having a circle and make it very, very small. So circle disappears. So that seems very natural thing to do. And that's what we did. It's Euclid, everything is Euclidean because I'm doing heat corner. But of course, I'm looking for actual wave function in real time. So that idea went into this computation, in this computation, same computation here, but except for SUN, numbers do not match. So the first one that does not match is rank to SP or SO5. Left-hand side, this, uh, this boundary, analog of eta invariant, give you 5 over 32. Analog of characteristic class integral give you 9 over 64. But this is the example where left-hand side minus right-hand side it should equal index, which should be integer, and in particular 0, but it's not a 0. And this was a uh, N equal 4, the 4 supercharged and A supercharged version of the story. Uh, there is another, yes. So what is it that you are computing if it's not an index? It, it, it is index, it's just that there is somewhere along the way 
computation needed a correction. That's what I'm going to tell you later. So exactly what are we missing here? For example, I mean, looking at these two numbers, you might say, oh, one of the two guys made a mistake. That was my reaction too. And I, since I invented the left-hand side, I naturally would have said the right-hand side is wrong. But right-hand side has very nice, beautiful computation. And as I will tell you, uh, during the last few years, I redid the right-hand side. And indeed, these are correct numbers. So there's something missing that I'm not telling you about yet. So we want to get there. Anyway, so n equals 16 version of the same problem, just like SUN problem, give you a bunch of predictions in this M-theory context. And if I write those <coughs> index, actual integers, in the form of generating function, this should be the one if M theory do exist and it does produce type two, type two A string theory at the end of the day. But of course the program was not is not going anywhere at the moment because even simpler problem there was an issue. Okay. So this was state of things as of year 2001-2002. Actually, I was doing something else. I was doing something else happily for many, many years. But about five years ago, I came back to this general class of index problem because of not this old problem, but because of word crossing problem. I wanted to understand, for example, conservative Solvemans, this very beautiful word crossing from the physics viewpoint. And there I ended up doing, uh, again, supersymmetric quantum mechanics index problems. So for physicists, they're studying, for example, D3 brains wrapping Calabi-out three folds and propagating along the remaining time. And this is something called BPS particles. Some of them bind together and some of them do not bind together. And sometimes this bound state disappears. So this is so called wall crossing problem. And this has, of course, geometric analog in mathematics. So there, what I have to solve is, again, gauge the quantum mechanics, <coughs> not just matrix model, but matrix with other representations added in the chiral multiplet. And start with some dynamics like quantum mechanics like that, and again compute, define and compute index-like object as much as possible. In fact, we, we did this entire thing. Uh, by the way, this was something, did I say this? Yeah, maybe it shows up later. Uh, something I did with Kentaro Hori and Hyun Kim, who, who was my student back then. I'm not going to tell you how we did it. This is a path integral computation, but you, you can sort of think of it as analog of heat kernel computation. It's just technically easier to do path integral. So the, the object we wanted to compute is index, so kernel of supercharge, kernel of Dirac operator. You trace over minus one to the F. This plays the role of F. And then you put a bunch of equivariant parameters. <coughs> So we call it defined index. However, this is again impossible thing to compute generally because uh, you really have to understand ground state sector only. What one can compute is some, this, some, this thing called omega. It's a path integral version of this, except you compute it in a different limit. So this is gauge dynamics. So there is a gauge coupling constant E, and this E, this number, controls all the dynamics, <coughs> all the interactions, almost all of it, not everything. So this path integral computation, you do it in this small parameter regime, arbitrarily small E, and hope you, you you'd hope that if this happened to be a discrete system, if, <coughs> for example, this flow down to some geometrical model at the end of the day, something like CPN, Quintic, then you can argue that this deformation, just like one would argue small beta or large beta does not matter, this deformation does not matter. And in such cases, you would find this quantity equal to this quantity. Not always. 
but there are a lot of cases where it does. So that this is already a very useful tool to study geometry that comes out of this gauged system. So that's sort of Lagrangian way we, we start, and we say localization and magic happens, and we do the computation. <coughs> and there is a long, long story behind this, which I'm going to get into. Um, you get this. But this is not something we invented. This is invented by actually mathematician Jeffrey Kewan, and then developed in the purely mathematical size. What we added is a path integral derivation of that, and I think we added how wall crossing happens in this system. <coughs> so this is some sort of topological invariant. So you think when you change parameter of the theory. So for example, wall crossing happens when you change the shape of Calabi-Yau threefold continuously, and at some point, all of a sudden, you are calibrated uh, sub-manifold the, the set of that changes. That's what wall crossing is. So what we added is how that re is realized in this computation. So don't, don't worry about any detail of this mechanism. Just be assured that there is a routine which we can put into the Mathematica, and which is exactly what it did. And at the end of the day, we get bunch of polynomials or rational functions as a result. Okay. So this actually followed similar computation by Benini, Yeager, Hori, Tachikawa a year ago uh, for the purpose of computing elliptic genus. Uh, you might think, especially physicists might think, oh, why not take this and do go to a small radius limit of one of the circle? And then you get from two dimension to one dimension. Wouldn't that be a better thing to do? <coughs> but turns out the whole point of this exercise is that that's impossible because uh, those of who you who have worked on wall crossing will know elliptic genus does not have a wall crossing. So if you take this sensor and do the dimensional reduction, you will get one side somewhere, but not this discontinuous behavior of the index at the end of the day. Anyway, so for example, let me take simplest case, uh, the, the U1 with N fundamental representation, which will define CPN minus 1. On one side of this wall, you get the usual Hutch diamond of CPN. On the other side, in this theory, in one dimension, you get nothing. So you have here n number of ground state. On the left-hand side, on the other side of parameter regime, you get nothing. This is wall crossing. This prototype of wall crossing. Uh, this has a just of all the space of stable things which can disappear. Yeah? That's right. That's right. Uh, Quintic, which would have gave you same uh, Hutch diamond in geometric and landau ginzburg phase, in one dimension, the vertical middle in particular disappears. There is a reason why vertical middle disappears. Uh, another Calabiao example, which has four, this is one of the canonical uh, two Keller parameter uh, uh, Calabiao threefold, which is embedded in weighted product, projective space here. And you get these various Hutch diamond. You can see something happens vertical meters first, and then horizontal meters, etc. So every single one of these, I can compute. Uh, one thing I, I failed to mention uh, when I was, which I should have done, is if the the this theory, this gauge theory, give you. Uh, manifold at the end of day, uh, which is compact and geometry, is if it flows down to nonlinear sigma model to a compact geometry, <coughs> I'm effectively computing chi y zenas. Okay, that's why I was able to get cohomology information. But of course, chi y zenas alone will not give you cohomology, yet I'm displaying the cohomology, right? I mean, this, this is of course a trivial example you already know. Other things not that trivial. One of the things that happen in this business in, in physics side 
is that for certain class, a very large class of gauged quantum mechanics, and in particular, entire class of UN type quiver quantum mechanics, there is a routine that allows me to reconstruct the entire Hoch diamond in all chambers. Okay, so that requires, that's another talk, sorry. So that's, I'm, I'm displaying, use, I use that routine, which I'm not telling you, and reconstruct this Hoch diamond of this quiver theory in particular chamber. So sorry about telling you details of this, but trust me, there is a, such a routine. And there is all kinds of things I want to do with this thing. And in particular, this quiver invariant concept that came out of physics, which allowed me to do things like this. Okay. So we now have uh, what I, in the title, somewhat uh, boldly suggested index theorem. I'm not quite sure I, I have the right to call it theorem. But as far as physicist goes, this is as rigorous as it can be. So I have a routine. I, I can put it in Mathematica. I can compute things that if you ask me to compute in, in many cases. Now, <clears throat> so one of the things that bothers <coughs> one when, when you, you try to do computation like this, is this phenomena of word crossing where cohomology changes suddenly. And also, this sometimes contribution, fractional contribution, or non-integral contribution you get. And both of this has something to do with the fact that there is a continuum sector. Right? So that continuum sector, you have to treat it very carefully. Right? It, since it's not discrete spectrum, it, it might depend on how you regularize that integral, that sum, continuous sum. And in particular, in these examples I was showing, what's generically happening is, remember there was this parameter C, and at C equals zero, something happens. So positive C, you have one cohomology. Negative C, you have a different cohomology. And from the physics term, the reason that happens is because there is a direction in this dynamics that mathematicians do not usually look at. Physicists call it Coulomb phase. There is asymptotic Coulomb phase along which plane wave-like state can propagate. So you have a continuum of state that possible above certain energy. And that energy is dictated exactly by this parameter C. So when this is somewhere up, finite, you can identify this piece very easily. So in particular, you can scale up this C to infinity without affecting ground state sector that's sitting there. And that's how you do uh, compute the index, usually, in such a system where you have finite gap. So in, in fact, Word crossing happens precisely because as you approach C equal to zero in your parameter space, this continuum touches ground state. And of course, on the other side, it'll go up, but sometimes leave behind some extra state or take some extra ground state with it, go up. And that's why you have word crossing happens precisely when this parameter is zero. So that's why we see pictures like this. But in each chamber, because of this gap, we, can, we know how to deal with this continuum easily. And that's why we have these integral numbers at the end of the day, without worrying about analog of this one quarter earlier. OK? Can you say more what is the horizontal axis? Oh, sorry. So this is what we call Coulomb axis. And this, this is an expectation value of your vector multiplet scalars. So in mathematics literature, they do not usually look at that direction because they just gaze away. And usually, you look at Higgs part, what we call Higgs part of the theory. So both of these are Coulomb branches. So, so these are Coulomb branches. This part also. Uh, what do you mean this part? 
I, I'm just displaying one axis for illustration. So the blue and green is just it's the wave. Oh, I see. This is a wave that propagating along this. Sorry. So arrow probably I should have done wavy lines. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> So what this means, this having something like this means that even though I wanted to compute these integers or integral coefficient polynomial, uh, you cannot quite do that. You end up with theory where this parameter or this gap is absent. And in fact, this very first example I told you where I got 5 over 4, is an example where I do not have a parameter like this naturally. I could introduce this massive deformation you suggested, but that's not the original problem, original dynamics. I want to stick to original dynamics. Now, original dynamics does not have anything like this. So this continuum come down and give you something funny that you need, you should be, you want to be able to get rid of. So generically, this localization computation, path integral computation do not give you integral things. However, as I was giving you this 5 over 4 example, it's not this additional piece you get is not just arbitrary real number. It's 1 over 4. In fact, it's 1 over 2 squared if you know how to do. Uh, it's a, there is a reason for that. So let's understand that reason. So we will come back to the same set of problem, arbitrary gauge group. But now we have a new device to compute what's the left-hand side of this, say, analog of Atia Pato de Singer theorem. Okay. So we will compute this omega quantity. And for su supersymmetry 4 and 8, you do this computation you get these uh, rational functions. Uh, all the computation you should think of it is analogous to have doing the same computation, except you set equivalent parameter to nothing, which means y equal 1. Therefore, this gives you 1 over square. SU3 gives you 1 over 9. SU4 gives you 1 over 16. This gives you 1 over n square. So I'm essentially reproducing 20 old numbers in the new method. But I have extra information here because this refinement allowed me to distinguish this not only by numerical factors, but by this linearly independent rational functions. Uh, remember, it was SUN was fine, but it's SO, SP, and others that were problematic. So let me redo that computation in this way. This is going to be different from the old computation. So I, the, the rational functions I get is something like this for rank 2, uh, rank 3, rank 4, you have these complicated things. What is it? Uh, you need to understand the structure of this first. And here is the answer, if you believe this or not. The, all the rational expression, you can package into the following thing. Given a Lie group, simple Lie group G, its vial group is this, so this is cardinality of vial group dividing the entire thing. And you sum over element of your vial group, but not everything, but something called elliptic vial elements only. That means when it acts on the root lattice, it leaves no direction invariant, no eigenvalue 1. Okay, so this apparently is called elliptic bile. In fact, I, I haven't seen this elliptic bile too many places. I mean, I, I don't know if mathematicians use this much or not. But you do this sum, you do determinant, and every single one of them has this <coughs> shape. So why is that? In fact, remember this one quarter I was saying I have this funny way of computing it? And that was taken up by Katz and Smilga two years later in, in a, for arbitrary simple Lie algebra. And in fact, this was what they obtained back then with y equal 1. Oh, this is elliptic bio. And the reason that happens is this. So 
as, as I was saying, I want the integral thing, but I can compute only bulk thing, which is small beta limit of this expression. What I have computed just now is actually a different limit, small coupling constant limit of the path, same path integral. On the other hand, both beta and e squares are dimensionful things. And it doesn't really make much sense to send a dimensionful quantity to zero. You have to find what is the dimensionless combination. And that combination is this. So what this means is this is actually computing this quantity that I computed a long time ago. And on the other hand, this is the problem where you expect no bound state at all because of smaller supersymmetry. And then this should be 0. So this computation, the end result of this computation has to be same as minus of this. And that minus of this was expressed this way when y was 1. So you can have guess, make an intelligence guess what this expression should be. So that's what we wrote down. And every single one of them indeed agree. What is the upshot of this story? Upshot of this story is that, remember, I had two, a way of computing the left-hand side that Basili did for arbitrarily simply algebra. And I have the way of computing the right-hand side in such a way that this should cancel against it. There was small discrepancy. I have a new way of computing left-hand side. And remember the small list example where discrepancy happened was sp2 <coughs> or equal SO5. It's the same Lie algebra. And therefore, it has same expression, same bile group. And therefore, it has same expression. And you evaluate this at y equal 1, you get 5 over 32. And this was the number. I needed to cancel the other number. So for, for the moment, let's forget that there was this other conflicting numbers, but just try to trust this number. And then this number equal that number, and therefore this index that you wanted is 0. So that's consistent with anticipation that no bound state exists for smaller supersymmetry. So let's buy this for now. And then go on to n equals 16 version of that problem, maximal supersymmetry version. So this is the problem where the index, the integers you wanted, is not 0. It has particular prediction coming from M theory. And you do this. And everything, there is this bunch of rational functions that follows. And every single one of these would have interpretation it's coming from particular continuum sector. So what we do is compute, do the localization and compute this left-hand side. And you get horribly, horribly complicated rational function. Look up what kind of things can enter on the right-hand side using the same procedure I use for n equal 4 and 16, 4 and 8. And ask, is there unique decomposition of this kind? And indeed, there is a unique decomposition. And for various, uh, up to rank 4, we did a computation. You have this unique decomposition in every one of them. So <coughs> the integers in the first line is the bound state number or index, the integral index you want, you want it to find. So those are real answer. Every single thing that follows is analog of this 5 over 32. It's a result of particular continuum state in this asymptotically uh, free problem. This problem where you have plane wave going out to infinity. Okay. So at the moment, I'm interested in once you I identify, once I know how to blame every single one of these to particular physics sector, only thing that remains is these integers. And I try to extract those integers. And in particular, I try to extract integers. I need to confirm this M theory hypothesis, the other set of hypotheses that was never confirmed. And I get these numbers. 
Uh, this is not much. I have how many integers? Uh, eight integers. However, these integers are consistent with this conjecture that was given around 1999. Again, this is physics conjecture. They, uh, Hanani and company said this must be the right number. Otherwise, there is a problem with M theory. And these numbers matches precisely with numbers here. This is not a proof because I did only up to rank four, but it's not uh, that difficult to imagine that this will persist down the road. Okay. So that confirms this M theory again. I mean, somebody like me, of course, think M theory do exist, so it's not really necessary, but. This is one extra block of evidence that says M theory do exist. Oh, by the way, I mean this this fractional the structure that we see, these rational functions we see is not something that's accidental. It has been seen in all kinds of other places. In particular, it has been seen in the wall crossing formula, or I should say solutions to wall crossing, conservative survey and wall crossing formula is naturally phrased in terms of rational quantity like this. This is the exactly same rational function you saw in the SUN case. And this is the index of quiver like this, where I mean when I say quiver, I assign integers for every single node. So if this <coughs> quiver in, if this ends have common divisors, okay, then you have to have this sum, and then you have to acquire these fractional pieces. Physics is exactly the same as SUN problem. And what the computation suggests is it's path integral computation of this compute precisely this rational invariant. Okay. And then that allowed me to extract the integer, part, integer quantity by doing reverse of this thing using this so-called Mabius function, which I learned only very recently. It's a inverse, nice inversion formula like this. And then you do the computation, and indeed, you get integral quantity out of this path integral, which give you fractional quantities. So there are tons of things I would like to do with this, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I, you might have noticed that I have examples only up to rank four. And that's essentially given by computational power I have, because this so-called Jake Jeffrey Q1 residue is just horrendous thing once, once we have large number of charged particles in the problem. So we would like to understand asymptotic large and version of this better, but I don't think such a thing exists yet, in, except some very simple problem like QCD type problems. Now, so as I promised, I need to tell you what happened 15 years ago. So I said, I claim that I have two set of numbers that matches precisely so that I end up with integer, 0 or 1 or 2, whatever, such that everything is consistent. But this goes against what I said like 30 minutes ago. There was a problem, right? There was different way of computing back then, like this. I have these fractional numbers. I have these fractional numbers. This number is not quite the same. And if you look at it carefully, Left-hand side is always larger or equal than the right-hand side. So this suggests we are missing pieces on the right-hand side. Okay, so remember how I, I got this? I start with one-dimensional quantum mechanics problem. I, I do some small beta, that is small Euclidean circle version of the path integral, shrink this circle, and end up with IKKT type matrix integral, and this is the result of that matrix integral. And when I saw these numbers initially, I said, oh, they must be wrong, they did a mistake. But 
Stadako, for example, in 2002, I mean, he must have been a little bit uneasy with these numbers. He came back, he teamed up with a Monte Carlo person and tried to do this integral numerically by Monte Carlo and came to the conclusion with, for example, this number is accurate within a part in 1000. So I cannot ignore that. So what I did uh, about a year ago <coughs> is redo this computation in the new Jeffrey Kiran residue method. So there is a version of doing this in, in this new uh, matrix integral technology that give you Jeffrey Kiran residue. And in my mind, it's a sort of, I have relatively rigorous, physics-wise <laughs> rigorous way of doing this. In fact, it's mathematically rigorous because it's no longer path integral. And I try to get these numbers out of that computation. And voila, I get these numbers again. So it's not the computation that is problematic. It's physics-wise, something is missing, or mathematics-wise. So this is the number I just gave you. I, I claim that I have obtained by doing this localization, where I take a different limit, small coupling limit. This is the number you get out of this elliptic bile sum. This is number you get out of this IKKT matrix integral. This agrees with this, giving me zero. This number does not agree with this. So what, what are we missing? So it has to mean only thing, only logical possibility that's left behind is that maybe the quantity I want you to compute, the small beta limit, is not computed by this matrix integral. That's only <coughs> logical possibility that remains. But if you think about it a little, actually, it's amazing that that didn't happen in general. You see, this <coughs> mechanics path integral or heat corner computation, you, you do in small beta limit. And as I said, small beta limit is like time disappears. So we re replace mechanics by matrix integral. On the other hand, one of the non-trivial thing happens is A0, the gauge connection along the time. But because it lives on a circle, gauge connection itself or its holonomy values in circle. So it actually lives on a circle. However, when by the time I get there, what I do is replace this circle by an infinite line. I pretend A0 was one of the scalar field, a joint scalar field. So what, when I do that, what I'm really doing is replace this large holonomy circle by a line. But circle does not equal line. Topology is different. There is a problem, potential problem here. So what really happens is something like this. Along this circle, in fact, there are not one place but many different places where I, I, this place give you one matrix model, this place give you another matrix model, this place give you another matrix model. In fact, this actually happened for SUN. What happens in SUN is depends on how you define your mechanics. Uh, there are actually n such places displaced by center of the SUN. So depending on whether you are careful about whether you do SUN or SUN mode ZN, in one version, if you do SUN in the beginning, then you actually have N such identical holonomy setters. So you acquire numerical factor N in front, and without that factor N, you end up with a complete nonsense. So, so how, how do you get these yellow points? Oh, the, so uh, let me give you answer in more general setting. So generally, these, these are places where when you do dimensional reduction with this holonomy value assumed as a background, you do not have any free U1 factor in the remaining degrees of freedom. And in this problem, what that translates mathematically is that these are holonomy values 
where unbroken gauge group is maximal non-abelian subgroup. So re remember how you obtain those. You take a uh, thinking diagram, make it extended thinking diagram, and you cross out one circle. That's the way you obtain maximal uh, non-abelian subgroup. And all, all such holonomy that give you maximal uh, 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 non-abelian subgroup contribute, it turns out. And any other point does not contribute because of this small beta limit. So using this, for SP, SU, SO, you can sort of look for those maximal non-abelian subgroup. Those are those things. And you have this finite sum. And remember that I have a bunch of fractional numbers on the right-hand side, which were slightly smaller than the numbers I wanted. So you put in these smaller numbers on the right-hand side sum and try to see you recover the number, these fractional numbers you wanted. And indeed, every single case, it works out. In particular, Basili's paper have a conjecture on individual of these SO and SP. I mean, although he did explicit computation for small rank, up to rank four, I think, or rank six, but he has actually a conjectured answer for this for arbitrary version. And that works out perfectly, every single one of them. So this is why you are missing 1 over 64 in SO5 example, for example. So it's not that computation was wrong. It was a p missing piece. And actually, I have to confess that that's my fault. I mean, when I did it, when Sadie and Stan did it, we were not very careful. We said, oh, this must be matrix integral at the end of the day. And that was took up by Moore and Eckhart of Shatashibili. And they were very successful for SUN. And then that was took up by Stadako and et cetera. So it's really our fault. We should have been a little bit more careful back then. Now, <clears throat> in remaining five minutes, of course, this is, was personally very satisfying because I ended up solving you know, all the remaining problem I started out solving back then, uh, not mathematically, but physically at least. Uh, but I have a bonus, this saddle thing. I mean, this, I think people, I mean, in old times, notice this sort of thing might happen in some cases. But they keep forgetting about it, I think. <coughs> and I was forgetting about it. But this is very important now because these days, we compute all kinds of localization computation for higher dimensional uh, gaze theories. Superconformal index, a twisted version of that. There are all kinds of partition functions people now can compute very explicitly. And whenever they try to uh, relate, say, for example, four dimensional such partition function to three dimensional partition function, you always have to invoke a circle very small size circle. And there is a relation you want to understand there. And whenever you have a gauge theory on a circle, you have to have holonomy circle. But if you do dimensional reduction, you just keep this guy and nothing else. And this will give you a completely misleading picture of small circle limit. So in this, uh, <clears throat> right, so generically what happens it turns out, d-dimensional manifold on some supersymmetric, uh, manifold where you can define global supersymmetry, S1 times some manifold. Uh, in four dimensions, this is typically what we call ciphered manifold. You compute this, take small beta limit, and try to express that in terms of three-dimensional uh, partition function on M. But there is typically a uh, coefficient that is not entirely determined by this theory. It's determined by relation between this four-dimensional theory and three-dimensional theory. And this is typically exponential piece. And the coefficient of exponent is called Cardi exponent. What people initially try to look at is really look at this guy. Trivial holonomy, expand around it, and get some 
expression there. But it is very clear that you should not do that. It might be that this is the dominant contribution to this, but maybe this is the dominant contribution. You never know until you do the computation. So uh, and in particular, the particular version of this where this is torus, I'm computing Witten index again. And what this tells me is Witten index of four-dimensional gauge theory is actually sum of Witten index in three-dimensional gauge theory in a very particular manner. So, I mean, people who did this sort of game a uh, long time ago should remember same set of field, four dimension, three dimension, you end up with completely different indices. But generically, this only happens, <coughs> this doesn't happen for SUN. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean, SUN, when I was saying SUN, it was in adjoint only theories. So, generically, this happens. So, SUN adjoint only was very exceptional. And we are very lucky 22 years ago to be able to look at that particular problem. So this happens all the time. And then we, we, need, we have a way of gluing, say, three-dimensional supersymmetric theory to a bunch of them to a single four-dimensional supersymmetric theory. I think this is a very important idea. Uh, and in fact, this also explains wall crossing that happens in 1D, which does not happen to this exactly the same thing. If you're sitting on the right place, you do not miss holonomy saddle. If you are sitting in some wrong place, you miss holonomy saddle. And that's why one dimension and two dimension has completely different behavior. Uh, another implication is suppose you have a dual pair, so called cyborg dual pair in one, say, four dimension, where you have two different theory, apparently, yet partition function agree with each other. You do the same to small radius limit. What you end up is bunch of duality in three dimensions, because you have to have sort of one-to-one -one match there. So that gave me another systematic way of discovering multiple duality in 3D starting from one single four-dimensional duality. Things like this has been noticed by, by the way, uh, collaboration of Aroni, Razamat, and Cyborg several years ago. But all of this is, is you know, I mean, you can sort of understand everything in terms of holonomic set. Uh, Cardi exponent, as I was saying earlier, um, I mean, let me, Oh, I'm on, I'm, my time is up, as I expected. Uh, there is actually a very nice set of partition function invented by Closet, Kim, and Willet. And it's, it's, it's something like this configuration. You have T2 fiber over eight so-called eight-twisted Riemannian surface that defines a bunch of uh, uh, partition function. And it's sort of a matter of trying to find in, in this sigma, in this two-dimensional remainder, the, what we call Coulombic vacua, like this, and how they cluster. This clustering of vacua is essentially holonomic saddle phenomena. And for example, given multiple saddle that, whose location is labeled by this fractional number epsilon, uh, or uh, not fractional number, it's number I think it's fractional numbers in general, between 0 and 1, you get Cardi exponent of this type. And those of you who follow this story should remember that B. D. Pietro and Komagoski made a very beautiful <coughs> suggestion several years ago that this Cardi exponent is simply given by, say, in conformal theory case, conformal anomaly, A minus C. What this tells you is that that's simply wrong. If you stick in there, and if it is dominant, that's the right answer. But typically, that's not the dominant place. It's elsewhere that's dominant. And typically, this number is larger than this number. But when you have a, the representation of gauge group is relatively simple. Say, suppose fundamentals only with the SUN or UN, <coughs> the, these other there tends to be sort of relatively suppressed. But you do have such a sector. You cannot forget about that sector. Where well, something similar happens with 
super conformal index, but that's, this is probably not the crowd. So that's the end of story. Uh, in M-theory hypothesis, this game of trying to find or, or not find threshold bound state, I, I think this closed an entire chapter, and I was very happy to do it myself. The, this notion of H Sadler is not just for quantum mechanics, but is any gauge theory. It's a very important idea, I think. And it, it particularly this allows to glue supersymmetric gauge theory in the adjacent dimensions. And this might be useful for something. I don't know exactly <coughs> what. Uh, there is even more speculative question about what is, is analog in tensor theory, but I think that's going too far here. Thank you. Remark. <coughs> when you say it closes a uh, sector in M3, but it confirms for the n equals 16 case, right. everything is good. So, what is finally confirmed? So, what? Well, what I mean, uh, confirmation, I guess, is that there is no obvious contradiction to M theory hypothesis. As I said, this is, all of this is necessary conditions rather than sufficient condition. So, there, is, there was this SUN problem which we have confirmed 20 years ago. Then there was, turns out to be ON and SPN analog of it. Somebody should have done it. And I was happy that I was the one who did it. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other things about M-theory that we need to learn more. But this is one small, maybe I should have called it subsection, not a chapter, but yeah. That's it. So eventually, are there confirmed numbers for exceptional E67? Ah, very good. <laughs> As I was saying, we were sort of, uh, our capacity was with this Jeffrey Q1 computation. So right-hand side, this rational expression, we of course have it. Question is, can we do this Jeffrey Q1 computation for the exceptional case? Uh, the highest we went to is sp Four, rank 4. We tried to do F4 and thing wouldn't just come out. I think I need supercomputer to do that. Or maybe you can invent a better way of doing the quantum integral. Probably G2, that's it. G2. G2 we did it and it comes out. Okay. And we have a number. I don't know if it has any prediction from anywhere else, but we do have a number. I think it's 2. So back to 2002 for n equals 4 for the simpler case, the right. computer stopped at E7, it couldn't do E8. Did we, 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 try, we did E6, I remember. I don't know whether we tried E7, actually. Yes. But uh, yes, but today computers are bigger, and, but the computation <laughs> is more complex. Yeah, I, I think is that, I mean, this old contour prescription that you used and uh, Microsoft invented, is actually much simpler than JK residue, if you look at actual set of residue. So I think one of the important thing along this line is to find a better residue mm -hmm. prescription, mm -hmm. conceptually, because by the time we have F4, I think number of charge vectors, I think 48, 52, something like that. And we are stuck at the stage of classifying the pores, not the residue computation. So we need a better way of doing uh, quantum, badly. So I guess you, you discussed the case with 16 supersymmetries and 4 and 8. But what about the 2 case, which corresponds mm. to d equals 2 in, in my Actually, that's the problem I'm working on. <laughs> Although you might find it strange that n equal 2 should be easiest, right? There's something funny going on, which I noticed even back in 97 with n equal 2. I mean, of course, Jens demonstrated uh, there is no such bound state at all. I th that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, there is something interesting. Because of smaller supersymmetry, I don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, let me say I'm working on it, yes. But uh, there is no, as far as not, for I know, string theory prediction about that number. That's maybe one of the reasons nobody looked at it. Mm -hmm. There's no more questions, then thank you, speak again. Thank you.